What's crappin' in Fun Seekers? My son-in-law Armando is back for another tantalizing episode of Grease Belly Garage. We're back on the two XJ Jeeps. I'm trying to explain to him what's going on. He's looking at me like I'm speaking Chinese, but we're gonna do this. He's never replaced an in-tank fuel pump, but he's about to. My name's Jason. This is Armando. Say hi, Armando. Hi. <laughs> he loves being here. <laughs> yeah. And this is Grease Belly Garage. People go a little crazy about jack stands, but this is what I do. Just use old wheels, works pretty good. Also, make sure you never clean your mess up. That that drives Armando crazy. <laughs> he's a he's a neat freak compared to me, aren't you, Mondo? Yeah. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is scooch underneath here to the front of this gas tank. Somewhere up there, you'll see wires and hoses going into the front of the tank. You see them? You see the locking metal ring, and there's tabs on it. Yeah. Okay, the first thing you need to try to do is look for the electrical connection if you can find it. There should be a wiring harness there. Can't cuss on YouTube. You're gonna get stuff in your eyes, so you really don't have safety glasses, probably. I don't. Well, here, now you do. It's really dark, but yeah. you look just like me, and I look just like Tom Cruise. <laughs> so we look good? It look is good, we look saying? good. Yeah, it's Mission Impossible. Are you hitting that on the top side of the ring? What do you mean? Yeah, okay. I'm trying to get it to spin counterclockwise. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I can They see. work. Yeah. They work real good. Nice. Yeah, you're going the wrong way. You think that's what I thought. Counterclockwise, counterclockwise is this way. Huh. Don't worry, I'll edit that out. <laughs> you go the right way, it moves. No. There it goes. Okay, you're loose. Okay, now. Shit, that was fast. Told you. It's All amazing right. what happens when you do things right. There you go. Okay, now wiggle that whole assembly out of there, and when you pull that out, it's going to bend and curve and twist a little bit, so you kind of have to work it out of there. Mm -hmm. And then there's a sock and a pump on the end of it. You're already cleaning yourself up? Well, look at me. You're going to get dirty again in a minute. I know, but it's I work better clean. Okay. All right. Sometimes you gotta break down and replace this entire sending unit, but we're not gonna do that because this Jeep is junk. But this is called a uh, sock right here. And you can see there's no screen left on this. It's gone, there's supposed to be a screen like that. Like this, yeah. So probably what's happened here is it sucked up a chunk of crap in the gas and this pump still functions, but it won't pump anymore because it's plugged up. So when you go to turn a car on and you hear that little mm -hmm. for a second, it's... that's what you hear, it's a fuel pump. When you turn the key to the on position, it will run for like six seconds or something, three mm -hmm. seconds, and then it shuts off. And then when the in ignition starts, there's another circuit that energizes it, so it runs nonstop. Yeah, okay, part of the sending unit came off, it looks like, because there's something that's supposed to rotate right here. So where's all the... That's that this one, and yeah. this. Yeah. All right, this is probably spent now, so we're not going to mess with this too much. Yeah, that's how it goes. So what this does is this thing sweeps back and forth on that piece of metal and it mm -hmm. changes the ohm reading and that's what makes your gauge work. But we're not going to be able to get this to work because this piece of wire clearly has fallen off and dissolved into something. So we're just not going to worry about it. The heck with it. And it will probably connect up here somewhere. So this is the hot wire and this is the ground wire and that stuff was actually all okay. So we're going to reuse it. So we'll leave that alone. Okay, go ahead and mount your new pump. All right, how's it look, Mondo? You got it all tight up there? I think so. We ended up just reusing the old fuel filter, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, it goes into that hanger. We gotta put that back together. Where's See the... that loop thing behind you over there? No. That's where the screws. That's from. where that bolt goes, yeah. And there should still be a 10 millimeter socket down there somewhere. All right, you might want to see if those hoses will clamp back up to the body where they were, or the wiring harness. They probably won't, but sometimes they'll pop back in. I think that was it. I think that's good enough. Yeah. Did that one feel like it went in pretty good? Yeah, okay. I clamped it down. 
Okay, cool. All right. There we go. Much better. I'm gonna stick in a bottle of this heat stuff. Water remover. It works pretty good. I think this stuff is just rubbing alcohol. This old rust bucket girl is running pretty good. I might have to rethink my strategy a little bit here. Put this back together. Don't worry about the hose clamp. Let's see if we got any coolant in here. I don't know if it does or not. A bunch of nasty rust. Oh, there we go. We got some green now. Uh, we'll call that good. It's this old girl here ain't all that bad, really. It's just mostly the floor, but still didn't have a title. It's still been kicked around, but we're kind of thinking about maybe using this as a mule around the yard and maybe just leave that one two-wheel drive and fix it up, fix everything on it. I don't know, these little things are pretty cool, pretty simple deals here. Good enough. You remember how to drive a stick? Cool. I guess we're fitting to find out, aren't we? All right. I don't think the seat slides forward yeah. about it's all rusty and welded to the floor, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. There's a rubber mat that goes on the floor. Is it down there? Yeah. Okay, good. That'll keep your feet from falling through the floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need a booster seat? Yeah. Okay. Wow, it moves. Cool. All right. God, it runs pretty good. couldn't find reverse good Dang it. real good get in after it Mondo really leave it in one spot for it to go because if you you go like a tiny bit too much yeah it'll stall out so you have to like Give it that happy uh, medium. Probably got, you know, it's probably packed full of mud. That's probably oh, what's that's, wrong with it. Yeah. yeah. I only sold out one, so that's good. Well, that's good, yeah. Not yeah. bad. I want you to look over this white one and tell me what you think. Remember we were talking? Oh, yeah. It's got floors. Oh, it's got floors. It's got windows that roll up and down. Yeah. I, this one smells like cat urine, but. Well, that's, that's okay. Something simple we can fix. Yeah, we can fix that. <laughs> um. See the steering wheel? It's got yeah, tilt steering so, and a yeah. better steering wheel, and the seats are pretty decent. And you know, I think it's a nicer overall, yeah. car overall. So the question is, do we convert this to four by four, or do we? Because that'll be a little bit of work. The hardest part is the transmission, but they probably both need a clutch anyway. So we'd have to put a clutch in whichever one stays. So you got to do the same work to change clutch. Yeah, it's got to do it twice. So, I but keep this one going then. You think it should be four by four? Yeah. Well, that's on the agenda for the future, so wear some dirty clothes that day, would you? And don't wear yeah. a nice hat because <laughs> it's going to be nasty. Just kind of needs a headliner in here, and otherwise, it's pretty good. All right, we'll do some thinking. Let's see if this thing will start at least. Okay, put a new high dollar fancy schmancy terminal on this one. Go ahead. Try it again. All right, try it again. All right. Oh yeah, that's pouring. We'll just put a couple of gallons in it, see what happens. Oh, I see it leaking. Oh, I see what he did. Down on the bottom, he doesn't have the <laughs> he doesn't have the fill pipe hooked up right, but I think some of it's going in the tank. Well, I thought you were talking about me. I'm like, no, I'm underneath the Jeep, <laughs> underneath the Jeep, when the guy put the fuel pump or whatever he did in, it's all raining down underneath. But I think most of it's going into the tank. This is what happens when you buy cars from a crackhead. You have to <laughs> fix stuff like this, Mondo. Isn't it fun messing with junk cars? A lot of fun, isn't it? Yeah. Ready? Yeah, let's try it now. See if it'll explode. 
Now this one doesn't have any muffler exhaust on it, so the neighbors will love it. And I think the clutch is messed up on this too, Mondo. I think it's soft or something, I don't remember. Massage the pedal, the gas pedal a little bit while you're trying to start it. Cycle the key off and on, not to, not to the crank position, but off and then on like four times. And then try it. There it goes. Hear how soothing that is? I like that. Nice, huh? <laughs> I can hear all kind of vacuum leaks and stuff on this one. Hear that? Probably this right here if I had to. I think it says hose, yeah. Oh, right there? Oh, yeah. That does nothing anymore. It probably went to... That runs better than doing that, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, let's see if it's got any coolant in it. Oh, yeah. Plenty of plain water in there to rust up. We gotta put some on top of the battery so the battery doesn't arc against the bottom of the hood. There you go, perfect. And that'll keep because this hood doesn't latch. So, all right, let's see if it'll drive. I'll crash my Durango. <laughs> than the other one better 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 okay then we're fixing that one and making it four-wheel drive okay all right go park that heat one steer and stuff mondo is it softer softer that one's easier to steer easier yeah. to deal with than For the gold sure. one yeah yeah it was making a lot of clunking noises but well it's probably kind of worn out you know i make yeah. a lot of clunking noises too but i got a lot of life left you know so <laughs> yeah i think we're gonna make that one the four by four for sure now so yeah yeah that will be in a future series like when it gets a little cooler i mean it's pretty cool now but when we have more time on our hands uh, we'll go ahead and swap all that drivetrain stuff over that'd be cool but i think yeah that's gonna be really cool we need to get the square body dually going, the Astro going, and the G-body. That's going to be next on the list. But at least we know we can move those two now, and it's going to be a good thing when we get done. All right, Mondo? Yep. All right, cool. He's doing good. Fuel pump today. What else did you do? Eight drove tacos. Drove stick shift. I ate tacos. Drove stick shift. Drove, yeah. 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 It's a good day. Yeah, it was a good smell day. smell like gas. You smell like gas, yes. Yeah. And I smell like and not the good gas. gas. <laughs> <laughs> Just a quick word about this old fuel pump out of my XJ, the 95 XJ. Um, apparently, this was the problem for quite some time. And normally, I don't miss things like this, but I missed it. And you can see the sock is just completely gone. So, simple fix sometimes goes a long way. And I was able to spend some time with my son-in-law and show him how to do some of this stuff. First time he's ever done that. So the bottom line with these two Jeeps is they both are actually much better than I thought. So I'm gonna go ahead and convert the white one into a four x four. And there, I've done a lot of research on these XJs and I've kind of like, I mean, I fall in love with cars all the time. It's kind of disgusting really, but I've watched a lot of videos about a lot, you know, from a lot of guys that know a lot about these things in particular, D and E in the garage. If you want to know anything about XJ Jeeps, definitely go and watch those guys. They know a bunch of stuff. There's a lot of stuff I've never even heard of before. And they've got a really good channel. So I appreciate it, you guys. I hear 
that the two-wheel drive two-door manuals are like a unicorn. Some guys say, ah, they're pretty common, but I don't really know. I'm, I'm kind of torn about this because if one would have been a little bit worse or whatever, it's a lot easier to make a decision, but you get torn because it's like the 95 would make a really good off-road trail rig. You don't have to fix really anything. You can just throw some sheet metal on the floor and put it in four-wheel drive and go. But then there's the whole future aspect of it. And, you know, as a 90, is a two-wheel drive two-door more desirable than a four-wheel drive two-door, both with a manual transmission? I don't really know that. So I think I'm going to just do the conversion anyway. And I'll just likely turn the 95 into the two-wheel drive if I can do it really cheap. It does not have a title. That's the big problem on the 95, and I'm not sure it's titleable at this point. It was a lot of horse trading that went on back then, and somebody lost a title years ago. I mean, this is probably eight years ago by now. So that's where I'm torn. Um, but I think I've made a final decision. There will be a couple of big videos of us doing the conversion into from two-wheel drive to a four-wheel drive. I'm kind of looking forward to that, to be honest with you. There's something addictive about these XJ Jeeps, and I can't quite put my finger on it. I've never had one before. I've had family members that have had them, but I've never really paid that much attention to them all these years. I'm, you know, here I am, much older now, and you kind of look back on these things that are 30 years old suddenly, and it's, it's really neat. It's like, to me, it's in my head, it's like going back in time to a better time, for sure. Now, I want to also say, I'm into both of these jeeps for very little money okay so i'm not really losing anything no matter what i do i mean they're next to nothing i have in these two things especially for two really good running engines that i have now that are fairly desirable i believe um, if you got any information about this that would help me out please drop it down below in the comments please click thumbs up i'm going to be making a series of rapid fire videos over the next few weeks and probably through the holidays I'm so far behind I just want to get some of this stuff caught up but I want to share the experience when I can and also teach my son-in-law teach my son-in-law's brothers as well when they have their break from college and I might even try to get my youngest daughter involved on the action too she likes to hang out with dad really appreciate you guys watching and I will most certainly catch you on the flip side Thanks for tuning in, Fun Triggers. Make sure you tune in again.